Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to Cabin Crafts. Uh, today I'm kind of doing something a little bit different. I haven't been able to post many craft videos because like I've said in the past, it um, usually takes three stages of a craft to do a, a complete craft film. And I was talking to Ron about it and he said, you need to make some craft videos, Candy. And I said, I know, but I'm so busy with so many different things. And one of the reasons is uh, on the 15th and 16th of July, uh, there's a Early American Life show at ASL Pewter, and I'm a part of that, and so I'm frantically trying to make some things to take to the ASL Early American Life Pewter show, and so I haven't been um, making stuff for video, and so he said, well, just tape yourself making stuff for the show. So today I'm painting a checkerboard, and so if you all just want to watch me paint some squares, you're welcome to. I don't know if anybody will want to watch this or not, but anyway, that's where I am and what I'm doing. And um, the checkerboard I'm working on, and I'm by myself, so I'm going to be moving the camera around and things, but the one I'm working on is this one. This one is all finished for the painting. It's been aged and grunged and everything, and it's got to be framed, and Dale does that for me. And uh, so the board I'm working on today is a replica of that one because a customer ordered one online just like it, and so... I'm painting that one. Here's another one that's finished that's got to be framed. And this, the, store is, oh, the store is open today right now. I'm in the shop, so I might get interrupted by a customer, and hopefully hopefully I will be able to get in a couple of squares before that happens. But um, And I'm going to move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing and uh, put on my handy-dandy spectacles cause, so I can see these squares. But I'm going to adjust the camera now to where it's pointing oops sorry pointing down on my work hopefully you can see that I can't see it but I think it is pointing down and I'm gonna get my I started already started on a couple of squares like I said somebody might come in and get interrupted but this is my paintbrush, and this is my paint palette, and as you can see, it's a mess because I use it all the time. But I dip my uh, dip my nice square flat brush in the paint, and I follow my pencil lines, and I want it to look really nice, as straight as I can. But, I also want it to look hand-painted. And there's another square. And as you can see, I made a little doodle there. I can maybe straighten that out. A little wavy line there. There we go. And then I'll do this one and this one. And I might have to move the camera back a little bit. Um, but anyway, Checker's been around for a long time. They found it in Egyptian tombs. They found it in Tutankhamun's tomb. Uh, but it was called something different. Anyway, they believe that it was the precursor to maybe modern Checkers, or droughts as they call it in Europe. And each board has 64 squares. I believe the game they played in Egypt was called Sinet or Seket, S-E-K-E-T or S-E-N-E-T. I don't know. I don't have, I didn't do my research before this video, so y'all have to fact check me on that one and Google it and look it up. This board has a little bit of a rough texture to it, so I'm having a hard time getting the cross lines here not wanting to do a smooth not wanting to do a smooth smooth line but anyway I want it to look I don't want it to look perfect I want it to look hand painted there goes another square so anyway each checkerboard has 64 squares and I'm gonna have to move this back a little bit like that 
so I can get this top one here. And I'm left-handed, so like I said, I paint from right to left so that I don't smear back over my own work. I actually should teach myself to write in Hebrew because they write right to left. I wouldn't smear my work if I... I had that trouble in school. A lot of times I would, uh, if my ink pen was kind of messy and I would be writing, I would uh, smear my work, smear my, smear my own ink. Now I hear, see there's a rough part on this board that's like right there. actually can go pretty fast. Anyway, I heard that the, the um, official calligrapher for the Declaration of Independence was left-handed. Again, somebody fact-checked me on that. I'm not sure if that's true or not. If it is, he was um, he, had a, he, he was a great calligrapher because I don't know how you would write with pen and ink and quill and not smear your work if you're left-handed. So I try to keep my strokes as even as I can, and then maybe I'll show you in a future video how I draw out all of the different geometric designs with a ruler and compass on my Parcheesi boards. And there will actually be a little design like that right here at the top of this game board. So as you can see, you're just going, I'm just following my pencil lines with my brush. I've got a pretty steady hand sometimes. Some days are better than others. Believe it or not, it also can depends on the condition of the board and the weather, too. It's a really humid day. Sometimes things just don't cooperate. But I like this big old brush because it covers a large area in a very short amount of time. I need more paint. And I'm just using acrylic paints. And I am going to move this. Again, I apologize for the moving around of the camera. But if you want to see each square. And this is very relaxing. I actually find this more relaxing than anything I do, and that's painting squares on a checkerboard. Talk about watching paint dry. But as I always say, when your hands are engaged, your mind is not. Or sometimes when I'm painting, that's when I Talk to the Lord. I feel like I'm just a little bit more focused whenever I'm concentrating on squares. I can talk to God. He's always listening. By the way, thank you all for watching my devotional videos. The last one I did about our founding fathers, not very many people are watching that one. I'm not sure why. Of course, not as many people watch the devotionals as they do the craft videos. But that's okay. I'm still going to keep doing them, so don't worry. I, uh, I lost a few subscribers because of those. 
but that's okay too. The Lord always makes it up to you. And uh, I don't know, maybe I offended a few teachers in that video because I said pull your kids out of public school. And I still believe that. And I know there are people out there who can't. They might be single moms. And they might be in a situation where they just absolutely cannot. And I understand that. So if someone took offense by that, I... I do apologize, that was not my intention. I'm not trying to cut people down. I wanna to try to encourage and lift people up. And if you're a single mom, I certainly understand your plight because it would be hard. You can't have a job and homeschool your kids at the same time. And if, I would like to encourage those of you out there that have means, that have money, there are a lot of Christian and parochial schools that have scholarship programs. So that is a good way if you don't have children anymore, maybe you're older and retired, <clears throat> excuse me, and you have means. What better way to share some of the way the Lord has blessed you by blessing someone else maybe a single mom that would like to put her children in a nice school and can't afford to and that would be a way for you to bless someone else with the blessings that the lord has given you lots of ways um i know the school i went to had a scholarship program um and it helped a lot of kids that normally wouldn't get to go to a Christian school. And a lot of churches have Christian schools affiliated with their church. So if you already go to church there, I'm sure you've probably had heard them say that they have a scholarship program. But sponsor a kid. And I always, this is why I always say this, you know, we put our kids in, in Sunday school and church for maybe an hour and a half out of the whole week, and the school system has your child eight hours a day. How in the world can the church compete with that? So, just saying, maybe if you can... Like I said, use some of the ways that the Lord has blessed you. And you can sponsor a, a kid to go to Christian school. Or maybe you're a retired teacher. And you could help someone homeschool their kids. That would be good too. Nowadays, with all the technology that we have, you can you can zoom tutor kids through a zoom meeting and uh again if you if you have if you're uh easy in your finances and you're not struggling you could offer to tutor someone's children for free as a blessing so as you can see This part goes pretty fast. It's when I start getting into all the little details that it starts really taking time. And then all of this has to be drawn on by hand. And like I said, it's it's a lot of fun to uh, to do the geometrics, like all the different little pinwheel designs and stuff that I put in my on my Parcheesi boards. See, there's some rough edges on this board. There we go. Just didn't want to cooperate. I didn't have enough paint on there. So I'm almost completely done with one side, and then I'll stop the video, because I don't want you all to get bored. Funny story, a lady came in my shop yesterday she told me that she 
They were very sweet ladies. She said, I taught myself how to tat, how to do tatting. And I said, oh, you did? And she said, yes. It was the most boring craft I've ever done in my life. And I said, that is so funny. I should have you on as a guest artist. And the title would be, let's learn how to do the most boring craft you've ever done in your life. And I bet people would tune in just to see what the most boring craft you could ever do in your life would be. But she said, all it is is just tying a bunch of little knots. And that, she just made me laugh so hard. Because I thought, that is so funny. That would be a really funny video, is to do the most boring craft in the world. And I'll bet it's not boring, because I've seen tatting. My grandmother used to do tatting, and it was, it's beautiful. But I can see where maybe she thought it was boring. This could be boring. Maybe you all want me to turn this into a, a one of, like Justine's ASMR videos, where I don't talk at all. But I can tell you right now, that is nigh on impossible with me. I would not be able to do what she does and keep my mouth shut. Because the Lord definitely gave me a mouthpiece, and I definitely use it. And one lady, the same group of ladies that came in yesterday, she said, I just find your voice so soothing and relaxing. Which again, I thought was really funny because I said, my husband would beg to differ with you. because I talk and I like to talk and like I said I've always got so much inside of me that I feel like I can't get out and I've always got so much that I want to say and I don't have enough time to say it I could probably relate to to John Adams in the John Adams movie when they would just tell him why don't you just sit down and shut up impossible okay so I'm almost done this is the last square on I actually need to do that on that side so my brush is splitting a little bit so when I get this square done we are halfway there as far as the squares are concerned and then I'll flip the board and do it all over again and paint the other squares on the other side and then I won't have gone back over my gone back over my work and smeared it. And I'll just go this way. And that's that. Half the squares are done. So now I'm gonna just flip the foam back up, if I can remember how to do that, without making y'all seasick my hands in the way you can see my hand okay there we go it was me and my glasses so let me move this off of the board so half the board's done and then I'll just flip it around and do the other side so what I'll show you very quickly is a few of the other boards that I've painted let me reach over sorry again Let's see if I can get this one. So this is one I painted yesterday. This is a Parcheesi board. This is freshly painted. Every line was painted by hand. All the different little pinwheels in there. That's all done with a compass and a ruler. And then it will get antiqued. And let me show you what an antiqued one will look like. Because that's a lot of fun. Just set that down there. See if I can do it without knocking the. Here's an antique one, and these will these will all get framed. There's one more, but I'll show y'all. Well, two more boards. So this first board, you'll remember this one. This is the one that me and Ron made together. So I'm going to frame it, or Dale's going to frame it, and then this one will be uh, at the show. And then the last one is another Parcheesi board. This one's called a Mariner's Compass. Parcheesi. And the reason being is because these stars are called Mariner's Compasses. 
And Parcheesi, this is one of my favorite boards. Parcheesi is paid, played a lot like, um, like Sorry, the game of Sorry. And they all just fell over. Anyway, Parcheesi is played like Sorry. And you roll the dice and you move around the board. And those little, let me pull one. These little dot, these little dot spaces, so they're different colors. So this is green, and if you roll a six, then you can bring a guy out. You'll have four little guys here, and you come out here, and the, you go all around the outside of the board, all around the outside edges, and you got to make all the way around, and then you go home, which is in the middle. Now, if you're on one of these outside spaces that's not got a dot, those are safe spaces. You and, and another person lands on you, you get sent back home. And you got to try to get four of these little tokens all the way to the center. So it, it takes a while, actually. It's a lot of fun to play. And um, But if you're on one of these dot spaces, this is a safe space. And they can't send you back. And then once you're in the middle here and you're on your way home, so you have made a, you've made a complete circuit all the way around the board, so you go all the way around the outside edges, all the way up, all the way around, and then when you get back to your spot, say you're green, then you start going home, and you got to roll exactly into home, and they can't send you home if you're in the center and you're on your way. They can't send you back if you're there. That's safe too, but a uh, lot of fun, four players, and I remember one time I was at a show and some German folks came and they said um, a really big... Uh, complicated German word that I can't say. It's something like uh, in German, Entschuldigung is like I beg your pardon. And that's what they said. It was something similar to that. But in the German, in the English, they said it means don't be sorry or don't be angry. And I'm like, wow. So they get really mad when they play this, I guess. And, and it's like our version of sorry. But you don't have the popomatic bubble. <laughs> so anyway, that's the Parcheesi board that I'm working on. Hope you enjoyed watching me paint squares. Could have been as boring as heck, I don't know. But um, anyway, Ron's like, just just show them what you're doing. Just when you're painting, just take take some tape of what you're painting and let them see what you're doing. So you all know I'm not just messing around and being lazy. So thank you all for watching. Have a good day. God bless. And I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Let me see if my little gadget will work this time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Not working.